Well, a few weeks ago, the federal government announced that 650,000 migrants would be arriving in Australia this financial year and next. For context, that's the population of Canberra and Darwin combined, plus a few more. Well, this week, the government say the migration system is broken and needs a massive overhaul. Home Affairs Minister Claire O'Neill said specifically the government needs to ensure that we attract more highly skilled migrants, that we create pathways for temporary visa holders to become permanent residents, and that we need to match labour shortages with the skills list. Here she is. I think most of the migration debates that I've observed as an Australian have become virtually obsessed with big Australia or small Australia and you've got to push yourself into one of those dichotomies. I think inevitably the size of this program does depend a little bit on the circumstances of the moment. In COVID, it was right to shut the borders and our migration rate was effectively zero. Coming out of COVID, we are playing a bit of catch up. We've got serious labour shortages and it's probably inevitable that we will run a slightly larger migration program over time. Caleb and Liz says there's a few things that are a bit odd to me in this. Firstly, it's weird that the government announced a massive migration increase and then weeks later say, oh, and the system is broken, we need to reform it. But on top of that, Liz, we're talking about housing shortages, we've got hospital waiting lists, we're struggling to find school teachers, we're struggling to find police, we're trying to reduce uh, demand on the energy grid and at the same time saying we need to bring a lot more people into the country how do these two things fit together? Well, they really don't, unless we're actually figuring out where these jobs are required. Because they keep saying, oh, you know, well, rural towns and regional areas are in desperate need of this, this, that and the other. Yeah, but is that what you're doing? Are you identifying the overlap between where there is housing, adequate housing for the people that you're bringing into the country, overlapping with the jobs in those areas. And one issue that we're really not talking about is be the, the need for our migration level is due to the fact that Australians, people already here, are not having enough babies. According to the latest ABS figures, our fertility rate is 1.7, which is absolutely woeful. We're not even replacing ourselves, much less growing. And the last time it was this low, we started literally paying people <laughs> to have babies. And that may sound funny, but as we know, a great many nations have done that over the course of history and still have many measures in place to ensure that their people are having babies and replacing themselves. Australia's got a very ageing demographic I don't understand why our government isn't making more measures, especially when cost of living is so high, to encourage people to simply mm, yeah. have more kids. There's some simple tax breaks they could make or, heck, just go back to paying people for having babies. Well, I as, think it's, it's very effective and it saves them a lot of money in the long run. As Peter Costello, the then Treasurer, said at the time, one for mum, one for dad, one for the country. These yeah. days it's uh, one for mum, 0.7 for dad, and we'll import the other one from overseas. Exactly. But given that we are bringing in another 650,000 people by the end of next financial year, we hit the streets today to ask you, do we need that many migrants? Do you believe Australia needs more migrants? Yes, we need more migrants. Of course we do. We need all kinds of people from all over the world. Probably only to fill in the workforce because the other ones won't work. The other ones? Yeah, the ones that are, don't seem to want a job. I think enough of people in the area. <laughs> enough people in Australia? I think so. I think that uh, there are many parts of Australia at the moment that would love some more migrants out there. No, not really, even though I'm one of them. <laughs> I think so, yes. Why? Because it's a big continent with a little number of people. Things like the housing crisis, um, uh, hospital uh, shortages of staff and so on, do you think that's going to be a problem if we're bringing a lot more people in? No, I think that we're, there are plenty of ways for us to solve those problems in, in our own society and with the resources that we have.
No, because the migrant workers themselves will bring their own skills. Yeah, we do. We don't have enough people to do the jobs currently. Maybe, yeah, depending on, like, skilled migrants, maybe, for sure. For the workforce, for um, growth, economic growth. I think we need expansion and we need to um, develop our economy and all that. We do need more skilled migrants in the right numbers. Whether those numbers are correct, I have no idea. It will put on pressure on um, housing, but, you know, who knows what they're going to do about that. Now, it's interesting, the handful of people in that clip that said, no, we de didn't need more migrants were actually migrants themselves with <laughs> thick accents because presumably they've come to Australia and gone, bloody hell, this is good, shut the gate, don't let anyone else in, I want it exactly how it is. But uh, everyone else, almost universally, who said yes, said, yes, we have a labour shortage, we need to do something about the lack of workers. But the thing that always gets me about this argument is that we have a lack of workers because we don't have enough people. So you bring in more people to fill those jobs that need to be filled. But all of those people then need somewhere to live. If they've got kids, they need a, a school to send their kids to. Mm -hmm. uh, they need a shopping centre to go to, so on and so forth. So by bringing extra people in, you actually create extra jobs that then exactly. need to be filled. And we don't have enough people to fill those jobs, so we've got to bring in more people to fill <laughs> those jobs, and then we've got to bring in more people to fill the jobs that they created. Or too. we could just have more babies! So at what point do we actually go, OK, we've got enough people to fill the jobs. We never will. Good. It's yeah. a bit of a crapshoot running this argument that we need more people to fill the jobs. You will never have enough people to fill the jobs. It's the theory of eternal growth. And eternal growth only works if you always have a shortage of jobs. It's and and that change. is why what Claire O'Neill said at the top of that grab, like, oh, you know, people are forced into big Australia or literal Australia when we come around this argument. Yes, they are, because what you just described is the very point of the issue. That is big Australia. Yeah. So you can't open the floodgates and then shut them off and be like, oh, we have enough now. It perpetuates mm. itself.